What if the most recent polls are wrong like they have been in the past? Over the last three election cycles, in 2012, 2016, and 2020, polls have shown margins much larger or much smaller than the actual results. In this video, we are going to be looking at the most recent polling averages in all 50 states and adjusting for these past polling errors. With Biden stepping aside in favor of Kamala Harris, our results today will shock you. So let's get started. Starting out with the states with the least amount of competition. For these safe states, polls are generally safe for their respective candidates, and it would take a considerable adjustment to change that fact. Before we start actually filling in the map, it's important to note that because there aren't many recent Harris versus Trump polls yet, we will use Biden's most recent numbers for states that has no recent Harris poll. Trump is expected to win Alaska, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, North and South Dakota, Nebraska at large as well as his first and third congressional districts, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, South Carolina, and Maine's second congressional district. Adding these all together gives Trump a healthy amount of electoral votes at 126. And before we continue, only 3.8% of you guys are actually subscribed, so make sure you take the time to subscribe right now for more content like this leading up to the election in November. Moving to Harris's safe states, she is expected to win Hawaii, Washington, Oregon, California, Illinois, Maine's 1st Congressional District, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, D.C., and New York. We are also going to label the 2nd District of Nebraska as a toss-up, just because there isn't enough data to apply it to this video, and the most recent poll from Torchlight Strategies shows a tie. With all these states accounted for, Harris currently holds the lead over Trump, but this is still a close race. Moving on to the 17 closest states this election, as I already stated at the beginning of the video, I calculated the average bias by taking the last polling average from each of these states and cross reference them with the actual results from the last three election cycles. By applying this to the most recent averages from these much closer states, we can see a potentially more accurate outcome for the election come November. Starting off in the West is our first state, Nevada. The most recent poll from 538 shows Trump holding a consistent lead over Harris, with the margin currently sitting at plus 10. Nevada has voted Democrat in four straight elections, going back to Obama's first campaign. When comparing polling to the actual election results, Nevada shows Democrats being underestimated by polls in both 2012 and 2016, but in 2020, it underestimated Trump. The average of these three comes out to a bias of about plus 6400 in favor of Republicans. Right now, Nevada can be labeled a likely Republican state, but when we shift the plus 10, 0.6 to the left, it becomes a margin of plus 10.6 still favoring Trump. Because of this, we can make Nevada a likely GOP state. Also, as we continue filling out this map, it's important to remember that the margins are 1-3% to tilt, 3-7% to are lean, 7-12% to are likely, and anything greater than 12 percentage points are considered safe and are the deepest shades of red and blue. Moving on to Arizona, Arizona has been a reliably red state in the past, only voting for the Democratic candidate two times in the last 60 years. It seems to be closer this time around though, with Biden in 2020 managing to flip this state's votes, but by a fraction of a percent. The most recent poll from public policy polling shows Trump pulling ahead by 6 points over Harris, which is a substantial lead for the former president. When looking at the last three elections, polling shows that Republicans were underestimated in both 2012 and 2020, but in 2016, they were overestimated. With this data, the average comes out to about 1.2 in favor of Trump, taking his 6-point lead and growing it to a solid 7.2-point lead. Regardless of this shift, Arizona still falls into Trump's likely category. Next up is the state of Colorado. There haven't been a lot of polls conducted here yet, mainly because of the growing support for Democrats in the last 20 years. But the average from RCP shows Harris ahead by a lean margin of plus 6.5 over Trump. This shows in not only past polls from the last three elections, where Democrats held solid leads, but also in the actual election results, 
which showed that the polls ended up underestimating the Democratic candidate. The average of these three elections comes out to about plus 2 in favor of Harris, turning her plus 6.5 into a plus 8.5. This shift is enough to bump Colorado up from a lean blue state into a likely one. Finishing up the western states is New Mexico. New Mexico doesn't have an average yet on any major polling website, but when looking at the most recent head-to-head -head poll from 1892 polling, it found that Harris wins by a margin of plus 2. Polls over the last several election cycles have been pretty accurate overall, giving Democrats the edge. In 2012 and 2016, polls showed Democrats winning, but when compared to the results, they didn't give those candidates big enough margins actually underestimating them. In 2020, however, it gave Biden a margin bigger than he actually ended up winning. With this data, the average polling error comes out to about plus 0.7 in favor of Democrats. Adding this to Harris plus 2, the latest poll brings it up to plus 2.7, which is almost enough to make New Mexico a lean blue state, but not quite. For our map today, New Mexico is just tilts in her favor. Moving into the southern region of the United States is our first state, the Lone Star State of Texas. Being the second largest state in the nation and representing 40 electoral votes, Texas has a historical voting error, underestimating Republicans. This is mainly influenced by the 2020 election, which showed a margin much closer than what it turned out to be, underestimating Republicans by several percentage points. Because of 2020, the average error comes out to about plus 0.8 in favor of Trump. In polls today, the most recent average shows Trump ahead by plus 9.1 which becomes a plus 9.9 .9 when adjusting for any errors. Texas has been a Republican stronghold in the past, and it seems like it will be again come November, making it a likely red state. Florida is another important state this election, representing the third most electoral votes just behind Texas with 30. The most recent poll from Insider Advantage shows Trump 10 points ahead of Harris, with 49% to 39. Florida has seen one of the biggest shifts to the right in recent times after being one of the closest battleground states. In 2012, polls showed Republicans barely in the lead by a tilt margin, but on election day, Democrats ended up winning it. In 2016, polls were a little more accurate, with Trump pulling ahead and winning, but in 2020, polls actually showed Biden ahead, but as we all know, Trump ended up winning it. Because of this, the average error comes out to plus 2.4 in favor of Trump, giving him a margin of plus 12.4, makes Florida a safe Trump state. Georgia was the closest state in 2020, with Biden barely managing to flip it. This election, however, it seems like that won't happen again, with Trump pulling 7.5 points ahead of Harris. In 2012, polls ended up underestimating Democrats, but in both 2016 and 2020, they underestimated Republicans. The average of these three elections comes out to a margin of about plus 0.1, favoring Republicans, making Trump's average a whopping plus 7.6. Because of this, we can make Georgia a likely Republican state. Next up is North Carolina, one of the only battleground states to vote in Trump's favor in both of his elections. In past polling, 2012 underestimated Democrats, while both 2016 and 2020 underestimated Trump. The average error from these comes out to about plus 2.1 in Trump's favor. When looking at the most recent poll from public policy polling, Trump leads plus 4 over Harris, and when we add the previous 2.1 error, it bumps it up from a lean red state with plus 6.1. In Virginia, polls underestimated the Democratic candidate in both 2012 and 2016, but in 2020, polls ended up underestimating Trump. Because of this, the average error comes out to plus 0.2 in favor of Harris. Virginia has been a lot closer than most have been expecting, with the most recent polling average from RCP showing a plus 0.4 red margin. When we adjust for error, Trump only wins Virginia with plus 0.2, which realistically could go to either candidate. Because of this, Virginia becomes our second toss-up state. Moving up into the Midwest is the state of Minnesota. Minnesota has the longest voting streak in the nation, voting for Democrats for 12 straight elections. In 2012, polls ended up underestimating Democrats, but in both 2016 and 2020, they underestimated Trump, making the average error about plus 1.9 in the former president's favor. Polls for this election cycle have been mostly consistent, 
until recently where both major candidates are tied 42.1% to 42.1%. When we adjust this, however, Trump wins Minnesota by that plus 1.9 margin, making this blown tie blue state tilt red. Continuing along is Iowa, another usual Republican stronghold. The most recent polling average from RCP shows Trump ahead by a margin of plus 11.5, just 0.5 away from being considered a safe state. Luckily for Trump, the average error over the last three election cycles comes out to plus 4.5 in his favor, taking his plus 11.5 to plus 16. This is from Trump being underestimated in polls by huge margins in both 2016 and 2020. Because of this, we can make Iowa a safe Republican state. Wisconsin is the first state in his highly contested Rust Bowl region. The most recent poll shows a tie with both candidates sitting at 48%. Again, lucky for Trump, the average polling error is about plus 5.3 in his favor from him being underestimated in both 2016 and 2020. Polls on average show the Democratic candidate winning by margins big enough to consider Wisconsin a lean or likely state, but it ended up being one of the closest states in both of these past two elections. Adding this 5.3 to the current tie makes Wisconsin a lean Republican state. Next up is Michigan, another very close Rust Belt state. Past polling errors show a very similar story to Wisconsin, with Democrats being underestimated in 2012, but in 2016 and 2020, they ended up underestimating Trump by a large margin. Because of this, the average error is about plus 2.3 in favor of Trump. The most recent poll from public policy polling shows Trump in the lead with a margin of plus 5 over Harris. While it seems close right now, adding our adjustments brings it to a likely red margin of plus 7.8. In Ohio, this trend of Trump underestimations continues. The average polling error is about plus 4.7, mainly from 2016 and 2020, where polls made it seems like a much closer race when in reality, Trump won this state in both by margins of at least 8 points. The most recent polls shows Trump doing a lot better in polling than he has in the past, with him currently ahead by plus 9.3 points. Adding our 4.7 to this brings Trump's lead to plus 14, making Ohio a safe Republican state. Moving into the northeastern region of the United States is our final Rust Belt state, and arguably the most important, Pennsylvania. Out of all of the three Rust Belt states, this one has the biggest margin according to the most recent average, and looking at the graph, it seems like the recent event that took place a few days ago helped them greatly. As of today, Trump is pulling ahead by a margin of plus 4 over Harris. When looking at past elections, Democrats pulled ahead in 2012, 2016, and 2020, only underestimating them in 2012, but underestimating Trump in the other two. This makes the average error margin about plus 2.1 in the former president's favor. This brings Trump's plus 4 margin to a lean red margin of plus 6.1. Moving further north is the state of New Hampshire. Like many states in this region, New Hampshire is usually a reliable blue state, but it was one of the closest in 2016 where Trump barely lost it. Polls in 2012 overestimated Republicans, but underestimating them in both the highly contested 2016 election and in the 2020 election. But because the errors were so close in 2020 and 2012, but pretty accurate in 2016, it almost evens out making the average around one point in Trump's favor. The most recent poll shows Trump ahead by plus one, which becomes a plus two when we adjust it. This makes New Hampshire a tilt red state. Finishing our map is Maine statewide contest. Just like with New Mexico, this race doesn't have an average on any of the major polling websites. But when taking the average from the series of five polls conducted by digital research, Trump leads by a margin of plus 0.2 over Harris. Maine has overestimated Democratic candidates by an average of 1.7 percentage points in polls over the last three cycles. When adjusting our 0.2 with this average, Trump grows his lead to plus 1.9, which is enough to tilt it in his favor. With that, Trump wins the 2024 election, making him the 45th and 47th president of the United States. But what do you think will happen? Do you think polls are accurate right now, with Harris leading the Democratic Party? Or are there some states that might surprise us all? Let us know in the comments.